The Windows subsystem for Linux, a fast and effective way to get access to a Linux environment without the hassle of setting up a virtual machine for development or cross-compatibility problems. However, its use cases are often misleading. If an application is not available on Linux, then many suggest to use Windows and WSL instead. But isn't running Windows just running Windows? Like why are so many suggesting that the Windows subsystem for Linux is an actual Linux replacement? Does it hold all of the advantages, like increased privacy, the ability to customize your desktop, or is it more efficient to run the Linux version of programs on Windows? Who is it actually for? All of this and more in today's video. So let's get into what WSL is definitely not. There are plenty of reasons on why someone might want to switch to Linux. Maybe Windows is incompatible or just performs terrible on their device. Maybe you're fed up with constant updates that add unwanted features. Or maybe you're just looking to try out something new and exciting. Well, all of these things can be achieved by installing Linux on your desktop PC. However, it's not what the Windows subsystem for Linux is for. And almost all of these comments are not referring to any of those use cases at all. Quite the contrary. The goal of WSL is not to run a Linux desktop on Windows, but rather just to access Linux-specific applications, tools and to test compatibility without the need to install Linux like mentioned earlier in a VM or a standalone machine. You can run graphical applications with it, that's true. However, there aren't that many applications out there that are Linux exclusive. So who is it for then? Well, WSL is meant for programmers, system administrators, enthusiasts who might just like to work with it because of the bash shell, the command line essentially, and similar. But definitely not for someone who is looking to actually get away from Windows without all of the issues that might come with that. Programmers can use WSL to try out software that is designed to run on a Linux server, for example. They can install a web server, file sharing services, install their application like they would on a productive system, and see if everything works. They also benefit from a lower compilation time for programs, because Linux can be faster than Windows in that area. And this direct access to Linux resources goes even further and not only focuses on development, but enterprise solutions in general. One necessity when dealing with cloud infrastructures and a lot of data is that you often need to pre-process or cache data locally on a so-called edge device. This can save bandwidth, processing power in the cloud and the safeguarding of data in case your network gets disconnected altogether. And as you might have guessed it, these edge devices, solutions and similar are often run on Linux. And WSL provides a really nice way to test them. A database, for example, might be available as a Docker image and will at some point be deployed on a Linux device? Well, why not use WSL at first to figure out how it works and then take that configuration and just push it to the productive system. And nowadays we see a lot of reliance on these solutions. Platforms like Kubernetes for automatically deploying and managing containers that include everything for a software to run, Ansible for automating system tasks, and many more tools and programs should be easy to access and the Windows subsystem for Linux allows you to run them more or less natively on your Windows system. It's no substitute for an actual Linux server if you want to run it productively, especially since it introduces some overhead, does not benefit from all of the security features because at some point it does integrate with Windows, but for someone who is developing for Linux, needs access to Linux specific resources and just has or wants to use Windows, then WSL is the easiest way to get Linux working. If you however think that this is the same as running Linux on its own in terms of privacy, control or getting access to different user interfaces without having to deal with all of the incompatibilities, then you are mistaken. Like you can't just go ahead and install the Linux version of Steam and expect games to suddenly run faster because some benchmark suggests that it runs better on Proton. This is not how this works. And yeah, people actually tried that. It just seems weird to me, coming from that field, that WSL is often interpreted as a sort of gateway to all of the Linux benefits without having to deal with all of the rest. This is simply not true, because it doesn't replace an operating system, but rather just lets you access some resources of it. So when should you install Linux on your system natively then? Well, if you want to get away from Windows, of course. Like I said before, on Linux, you are the one in control. You get to choose your preferred desktop experience, you won't be annoyed by some applications that are being added after updates, your user data is being kept offline by default and not tracked like on Windows and can potentially even improve your PC's performance. But all of that depends on what you're using it for. 
If you are a developer or system administrator and all of your tools are supported on Linux either way, then a native installation could benefit you even more than running all of this stuff through WSL. Especially since you're probably a nerd. Like me. On the other hand, however, you might not feel like Windows hurts your experience, or maybe you just don't care about which operating system you're running. Then the Windows subsystem for Linux might be for you. The key takeaway here is, WSL is not a substitute for a Linux desktop or for servers as a matter of fact. It is a tool, a gateway to increase application support, testing capabilities and yes, to some extent run some graphical Linux applications on Windows. But it does not provide you with any of the other benefits that Linux has. So if anyone asks you on why you don't just use WSL when wanting to switch to Linux, then I think now you know the answer if it is actually for you or not. And that's where I leave it. Honestly, I was kind of surprised by looking at the amount of comments under my videos that focus on desktop Linux. And I really thought I should clarify that this is not what it's used for. But what do you think? Are there any applications or use cases that I might have missed? Maybe you can actually integrate WSL into Windows even more. Please let me know in the comment section down below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel and make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you had a blast and all that's left to say now is good morning! Good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.